Here's a GRE algebra question. Let's take a look. If A is less than B is less than zero, which of the following inequalities must be true? And then we have these uh, answer options right here. Well, let's start by drawing a number line. Number lines are great. They really put things in perspective. So I'll start with zero on my number line, and I know that B is below that, and A is below that, right? So A is less than B is less than zero. Now let's consider each of these one by one, starting with this first one right here. B minus one is less than A. That means that if I start at B and I subtract one, I'm gonna end up below A. Is that true? Well, it could be, depending on how far apart A and B are, right? And that's the problem. We're not looking for something that could be true. We're looking for something that must be true in every situation. So A does not necessarily work. I don't know if A and B are, you know, 0. 0.00001 centimeters apart or 1 million centimeters apart. I just don't know. All right, how about answer option B? Well, this one's actually pretty easy to eliminate. In fact, it must be false. Here's why. If I start at B and I add one, I'm going in this direction, right? I'm going to the right. And that's definitely going to be greater than A, right? That's whatever I add to B is going to go uh, positive. So that's out, right? Now we get to the more intricate ones. Let me point out something that you might've already noticed or that's pretty obvious. A and B have to be negative numbers, right? A and B are both negative because they're both below zero. Just putting that out there right now. All right, so let's take a look at this one here. A times B squared is less than A. A times B squared is less than A. So that's a negative times a positive is less than that original negative. Well, once again, this is an example of one that could be true. Pick some numbers, for instance. Let's say negative two and negative three. Uh, negative three times negative two squared is going to be three, uh, excuse me, negative three times positive four. So that's negative 12. Indeed, that is below negative three. But when is it not true? Well, it's not true if B were something like negative 0 0.5, right? What happens when B is negative 0 0.5? Well, when I square that, when I do negative 0 0.5 squared, I get 0.25. It gets closer to zero. And 0.25, times negative three gives me three fourths, right? Uh, negative three fourths. So I'm, I'm moving in this direction, which is greater than A. Test these numbers on your own if, if you don't believe me, right? Uh, so this is another example of one that doesn't have to be true. Um, let's take a look at answer option D. A times B is less than B squared. Well, let's go back to the easy numbers I was using. We'll say negative three and negative two right there. Right, so A times B is positive six. Okay, well, positive six goes up here, right? There's positive six. Uh, and is that less than B squared, negative two squared, positive four? No, it's not. In fact, it's greater. So I've disproven it. It doesn't have to be true. And by process of elimination, it has to be E, but here's why, right? Let's, let's stick with these same numbers here. A times B is positive six negative three squared is positive nine. So that's an example of that being true. And the reason why this is always going to be true is because the negative zone of the uh, number line is a mirror image of the positive zone. Think about that. If I take a negative number and I square it, it's gonna go further into the positive zone than, this, uh, than, than B would, right? So because A is less than B, that is, it's lower in the negative zone, and I'm gonna square it, the resulting positive value is always going to be greater. Correct answer here is E. For more GRE tips and tricks, or to sign up for my online course, follow the link on my profile.